Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation as part of the Industry Insight webinar series. The topic this time is Simple Billing for Solo and Small Firm Lawyers. Speaking today will be Elliot Piper. Elliot Piper started at Tabs 3 four years ago after leaving the USMC and has worked in technical support, quality assurance, served as an integration specialist, and is now a client experience specialist. He currently resides in Lincoln, Nebraska. The presentation today will be followed by a Q&A. Please enter your questions into the question box in the webinar panel on the right side of your screen. All questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation. We are recording this webinar and we will be sending a video and a follow-up email in a few days. We will also post the video on our blog at www.lawtechnologytoday.org. Thank you all for joining us. We'll now begin the webinar. Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Elliot Piper and I am a member of the current team here at Tabs 3. My job here along with others on the current team is to help guide our program in a direction that speci uh, specifically addresses the needs of solo and small firms. As a lot of you know, small firms in many ways operate very differently from the factory setting of big law. Without an army of marketing personnel and a legion of clerical employees, it does take a special kind of person to succeed in a setting where you're in control of your client development and acquisition while also working with them and, you know, practicing law. Uh, a little bit about us at Tabs 3, every one of our employees understands this environment uh, intimately. They struggle with, uh, or they, they deal with the struggles that come with it as well. We're a 40-year-old legal technology company with an incredible tenure rate. Over 25% of our employees have been with the company for 15 years or more. So for us, it is a tremendous source of pride that the employees here collectively know just as much about how law firms operate as they do about making and supporting software. So with that said, uh, here's my plan for today. I am going to talk about the greatest challenges that firms have told us they experience over the years in growing and running their firm, and also break down, uh, break down those concerns a bit, and we'll talk about some way to find solutions. Uh, first thing that I want to talk about today is uh, tracking your time right away, and the importance of tracking your time right away. There is one thing that I can tell you with absolute certainty. And that is if you are relying too much on handwritten reminders to add time and record costs, then you have done some unintentional pro bono work, and you have not been reimbursed for some costs you've incurred on behalf of your client. Now, I'm not saying that writing something down, even uh, time to be added later, is always a bad idea. What I am saying is that I would notice a post-it note in a place where I don't normally have a post-it note, but I would not be able to identify a new one in this picture. Now, bear with me on this next part. I want you to try and think of a pile of sticky notes like the suitcase full of receipts at the end of Dumb and Dumber. Harry and Lloyd spend a million or so dollars out of a suitcase that isn't theirs, and when the owners come to get it, it's just full of scraps of paper and IOUs. Now, in this comparison, it would be like you spending your time um, all month but relying on scraps of paper to get paid at the end of it when it comes time to bill. So for those of you who currently use billing software of some kind, you know this to be true. And that is that time that is, is not entered into the system does not show up on an invoice. Now I am sure that your clients are happy to pay for, to not pay for time that they never see on their invoices. But you know what, if you're gonna do pro bono, pro bono work for your paying clients, they should see that they're getting a great deal so that they can thank you. One thing I also understand, especially when it comes to attorneys, depending on the type of law that you practice, uh, largely thankless job, and I understand that. But uh, if you want to give them a discount on their invoice, they should at least be able to see that. Um, you only get paid, basically, and you only get credit if time actually gets entered into your billing system. So without a dedicated system that works uh, without interruption on a regular basis, turning sticky notes into money is simply not efficient. Uh, we've met attorneys here who have done their billing manually for years. They use a variation of sticky notes and scraps of paper and, and, you know, just notepads and things like that. And every month on the same day or somewhere near the same day, they sit down and they go through a pile of these papers. And then they use a previous document that's formatted like a bill in Microsoft Word. And then they'll replace the old transactions or type new ones in one by one. Now, one common complaint amongst them is that it could take several hours depending on exactly how much time they need to enter. Uh, and if they're exceptionally busy, like many of us are, then this process gets done very late into the night. That is a dedicated system, yes, one we've seen. But I think we could all agree that you should never be too busy to get your bills out on time 
or that getting your bills out on time should not be so time consuming that it takes away from your ability to practice law. There were other small things that we heard, uh, such as not being specific enough on a note so they didn't know what it was for, or remembering one uh, and trying to find it for the details and spending too much time looking for it. The other one is pretty trivial, but I have thought it's kind of funny that we've heard this from multiple different people, and that's something very simple. If you pile up a bunch of sticky notes, they stick together and they become cumbersome to try and read. Uh, the picture on your screen right now, that's not what billing should look like, we don't think here. So my larger point here is that the longer it takes for a time entry to be added to your billing system, the less likely you are to add it at all. So then we ask, why, this, why do we use paper? Why do we write things down as opposed to entering it in the billing system? Um, why do we use things like sticky notes? Well, there are two equally important sides to this that we consider on our end. And one is that attorneys and their staff will not add time to their billing system if they physically cannot add time to their billing system. Thank you, Captain Obvious. I know this is obviously true. But what I mean by this in particular is that until cloud products appeared, uh, this was mainly the reality. So the software was back at the office. You required an interim method of recording time. And cloud products were a huge step in the right direction here. You know, wherever there's the internet, there's your billing software too. So that is the first thing. Uh, the second thing is arguably just as important. Now that you can enter time anywhere, uh, can you enter time easily? It is hard to argue with the ease of writing something down. I mean, that's got to be the goalpost, right? If it takes too long, if it's difficult to navigate, or if it's any way frustrating, then any cloud system you have uh, becomes useless. If it's frustrating, we're not going to do it. So it's back to the sticky notes at that point. And this leads me to another secret nugget of knowledge. This is an insider tip, so don't tell anyone I told you this, but if it is not easy, people will avoid doing it. This is something that's true for everyone. If the same result can be achieved with less effort and risk, it only makes sense to do it unless you are thrill-seeking, which is noble. However, I probably wouldn't apply that philosophy to my small business. There are out there uh, several cloud-based billing options, and if you find that you have trouble keeping track of all the time that you worked, or that, or you know that in the past you failed to enter some time that was written down somewhere else, then I encourage you to take a look at what's out there. One good thing about cloud services in general is that they can often be tried uh, for a certain amount of time for free. In fact, some will even import the data that you currently have from whatever system you're using uh, they'll import it into your trial so that you can get an actual feel for how it would work. And if you do wind up utilizing a free trial, I highly suggest going through the entire billing process to see if it's actually easy to use. Create a mock invoice for a client that you added, and if all that goes well, then the next thing you want to do is make sure the software has all the features that you need. And then lastly, if you're ever having trouble finding one that works for you, as many of you know, there are consultants out there who specialize in helping firms find the right software solution for them. <clears throat> now, uh, just in case you haven't seen any cloud software um, at work, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up Current, which is the cloud billing product from Tabs 3, just to give you an example of what adding a fee using a cloud product looks like. Now, I want to say that this may look a lot like uh, some of the software that you already use. The idea here is not necessarily to reinvent the wheel, uh, the idea is just to make it easier for firms to add their fees. So a, a lot of systems will have uh, something like this, a home screen for you to sort of pick up right where you left off, and they'll have quick buttons, hopefully somewhere in the software, for adding fee, cost, matter, invoice. So for us, you click on add fee, and then you enter the name of the matter. Now for us, um, it doesn't really matter if the person exists or not. If I am adding a fee for a new client, I can just use quick add here to add them in the background, and we'll just say I had an initial meeting with them, uh, we'll say 0.5 hours at my rate of 175. Initial meeting, and then uh, a lot of software uses uh, keyboard shortcuts. You can hit save and close here, or some software, uh, billing software light hit Control S on your keyboard, which is what Microsoft Office uses to give you the ability to save things. So that is our idea of what it should be to add a fee in your system. Now, the fact is that an attorney either has a satisfactory system for entering time quickly, 
or they have unpaid time on their hands and stuff that they haven't added in. And this sort of goes hand in hand with my second topic, uh, which is creating a reliable process for sending invoices and getting paid. Now, whether you send invoices one at a time or you designate a monthly deadline and billing period, we can agree that you would much rather be adding time to those invoices than spending time trying to figure out how to bill in the first place. So one thing that is true for small firms and solo specifically is that billing should take minutes. It should not be an event that takes all day. Um, certainly not an entire day, hours maybe if you have a ton of clients, but it should not take that long. So if you operate within a small firm that has a support staff uh, that, increase, uh, that creates and sends invoices, this is doubly important. And the reason that I say that is because losing an employee in that setting can leave a small office paralyzed, especially if, if you know, the attorneys there are not familiar with the billing process or how to invoice then they have to spend unnecessary time not only doing the job left behind by the departing staff member, but figuring out how to bill as well, as what is pictured on screen right now as an attorney trying to figure out how to use the invoicing software uh, after their billing person leaves. And now this is only slightly remedied by replacing the employee because then there are two people who don't understand the process. Uh, very difficult to train a new employee when you're not savvy in the process yourself. So the goal of every office should be to create a system for sending invoices that's simple enough for multiple people to understand. I mean, even if there's just two of you, one should be able to step in for the other. And in that case, there's that small loss of time for doing the billing, but it's nowhere near the headache of unexpectedly having to learn. Now, each uh, billing system out there handles invoice tracking a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to show you current one more time just to give you an idea. Uh, a lot of cloud products uh, can mimic each other in the way that they do these things, but I want to show you the way that we do it here. Uh, for us, uh, we like to keep the invoicing process as simple as possible. To add a fresh invoice, you just go up here, or we can go to our invoices page. And what we like to what we like to create here is sort of a timeline, and that's what these blocks up here are for. So if you need to look at your draft invoices, you click on that, and you get a list of your draft invoices. Once you've approved them, we'll show you their unsent invoices. Once they've been sent, your unpaid invoices. And once many of them have been paid, the idea is to show you overdue invoices. Now, for anybody who needs to send an invoice, you click on batch invoicing, and you get a list of people who need to have an invoice sent to them. Generate invoices right down there. That is how easy it should be. There should not be five or six pages that you have to visit in order to send an invoice. Um, and that is what a lot of desktop software that is very feature heavy, um, if you guys have seen a lot of case management software that has billing integrated in into it, it's not always easy to get an invoice out there, uh, especially figuring out you know, how to get them out there, uh, not always an easy task. Um, so when you're looking at cloud products or if you're looking at any billing software, make sure that the ability to sit down as a fresh user and learn how to send an invoice in, we'll even say a half an hour, is something that's possible. Because without your billing person, you'll need to learn it. Or if you've learned it and your billing person is new, you'll have to teach it to them. This is very important um, that that type of thing gets done. So uh, we'll go back to our PowerPoint here. Um, my last topic for the day, and in terms of managing your back office and finding information, is the most important and that is your ability to answer questions about your own business and clients. Now, none of us are expected to commit client details and AR numbers to memory. For one thing, this information is constantly changing, and there is no shortage of information that we need to record about our clients. But one thing is for sure, and this is true for every entrepreneur and professional who has their own office, you should be able to answer questions about your business and your clients quickly. Um, you should not necessarily need to have them off the top of your head, like I said, but you should be able to answer these questions without too much effort. The days of pulling out a paper file to find an address on a client or contact are obviously over, um, but the legal industry does require, obviously, that a lot of documents be kept on hand. But finding basic information like how much a client owes or how much a client has left in their retainer, this probably shouldn't be something that requires a phone call or a trip to the office, though historically that has been the case. You call the office and you ask somebody to pull the file and find out what's left. Um, but if you accompany a client to a court appearance uh, and they have questions, 
you can not only boost confidence uh, for your client and you, but save yourself that extra phone call if you have up-to-date information to answer their questions. Now, one way that the tech industry has grown to answer this need is through the use of dashboards. There are dashboards everywhere. Every app and program that you use, if they have not added a dashboard yet, they are definitely trying to. Sometimes technology loses its way, asks us to try new and exciting things that are not all that useful. Look at Curve TVs or Google Glass. Uh, but dashboards were a step in the right direction. And just to speak of how prevalent dashboards are, I did a Google image search for the word dashboard, and among 500 plus pictures on Google, zero of them were car dashboards. I had to add car dashboard to the search just to find the picture that you have on your screen now. My, my point here is that you should have a screen that requires you to only give it a look to understand the status of the case. Um, I'm going to show you another example in current. Um, to give you an idea of the kind of information you can have access to if your client, another attorney, or even just you have a question about what's going on with your case. Uh, we call what I'm about to show you the Matter Dashboard, and the idea behind this page is simply to tell you everything you could possibly need to know about the client. So starting in the upper left, I should be able to read this sort of like a book as well. So um, Aaron Hitz, main contact for Armstrong Manufacturing, there is their contact information, uh, any notes I put down, 400 employees. If they have a balance due, that would show up here. If they did, I could receive a payment telling me when their last payment was, telling me how much I have yet to bill them, telling me what their last invoice was, if they have anything in their client funds, and how many hours I've worked on it. Without leaving this page, I could also tell you uh, what fees I've added for them, what costs, if anything, what invoice did I send them, um, when did I get a receipt and for how much? And if they have any related contacts, they would show up in this list here if I had anybody there. So this is very important and this is not unique to one single program. These type of dashboards exist all over the place and for good reason. Uh, this type of information should be accessible to you uh, with one or two clicks. Uh, and there's obviously more detailed information that you can pull from these if you want to go straight into like a ledger report or an unbuilt activity report. Things should be accessible for you from a dashboard as well. So um, we'll go back to our uh, PowerPoint here. Um, main idea here is that you need to find a system that provides the kind of insight uh, that you need without having to dig into full research because obviously that can be time consuming. Minutes add up and and at your hourly rate should be used for practicing law, not digging through a bunch of information. And then there are other people out there uh, who you'll need to provide information to that are crucial to your business. If you use an accountant or you employ a bookkeeper uh, or do your own accounting, I would argue that it's just important, uh, that just as important as the ease of finding in client information is finding a way to keep track of your books that is as effortless as possible. And I don't want to uh, you to take this as a buzzword. When I say effortless, I'm not using that term as a buzzy word to describe software while it's often used that way. When I mean, when I say effortless, I mean effortless in the sense that you and your employees are as far removed from the process of manual entry and manual data tracking as possible. Uh, the, the accuracy of your books is one of the most important variables in owning a business for any entrepreneur. So unless you're the accountant or you're doing your own books, um, I would always suggest completely removing yourselves from the equation as much as possible and letting somebody who you pay to do that or a software that you pay to uh, populate your books do that. <clears throat> because decisions you make about the growth of your firm are directly influenced by what your ledger says. And then there's also your AR to think about. And speaking from experience, Oh, one of my first jobs was in the collection industry ever a company here in Nebraska, and I worked there for two years, and I cannot think of a less pleasant job than calling people to collect money. Um, but one thing that sort of helped out there is, one, I, I was heavily involved in the filing of the legal paperwork that goes into, you know, determining assets and, and suing these people, not pleasant either. Um, but here's what I learned basically about when it comes to things that are overdue. People will allow a bill to become overdue sometimes, um, either 
through ignoring it or just from falling behind. And for an amount of time, they will make efforts to pay that debt. The sense of urgency will still be there. But as time goes on, the likelihood of collecting from that client goes down very quickly. Um, that once the sense of urgency is gone, or worse, other people get in line, um, people will pay the last person that they, you know, if they're trying to get debt off their backs and they're not planning it out very well, then they'll almost certainly pay whoever got to them last. So what's even worse then is that when slow pay becomes no pay, um, there may be pressure to file suit to collect your fees. Now, I don't know what your, uh, what your personal feelings are towards that. Uh, it's a risky venture, as many of you know. Uh, some firms even have a never sue a client policy. Um, and some even told me that if you ever did decide to file suit on a client and they decided to counter suit for malpractice, whether it was founded or not, they would have to disclose that information to their insurer. Little off topic, but it is when it comes to collecting money uh, in, the, in the fees that you have sent out, it's something that definitely needs to be considered. Now, I don't claim to have an answer that guarantees that 100% of your clients will pay their invoices in full and on time. When someone writes that software uh, and it doesn't somehow violate the FDCPA or involve breaking people's legs or getting the mafia involved or go outside the law in any way, well, I'll tell you what, as my professional opinion, buy that software. Don't even ask around, get a money back guarantee and buy that software, keep the receipt, but buy that software. <laughs> until then, uh, until we can guarantee that everybody pays on time and 100%, we limit the risk of that kind of non-payment by getting paid up front, um, asking for consistent retainer replenishment, and sending out bills as soon as possible. And what I can offer is this. Instead of waiting for your next billing cycle to find out if someone has let an invoice become overdue, Find a software that notifies you as soon as it becomes overdue. Because you gotta remember that every single day past due is a step in the no pay direction. So when you invest in a billing system, um, we suggest looking into software that takes an active stance on AR tracking. And uh, what I mean by that is make sure that you're notified immediately when the AR begins to dip into the red. This gives you a chance to send out a copy of their past due invoice to them, or if this is delegated to another person, gives them a chance to collect during the most viable collection period. Um, and we'll go back, we'll go into current here and I'll, I'll give you an idea of what that might look like. So there's two places uh, that this becomes, uh, that this is shown to you. One is a notification section. Now, as soon as you log into current, this is our uh, user dashboard or home dashboard or home page. I haven't really thought of a clever name for it yet, but this is the home page and works much like a dashboard. And in the notification section, one thing you'll see is that Matt, that guy that we added earlier, George Smith, uh, this is to remind me to go in and add the information that I didn't the first time because I quick added him. But overdue invoices here. Uh, Frank Smith, looks like I was working in the estate, um, or working with the estate, uh, 39 days past due. Now this notification section would show you the day it hits 31 or whatever you term in the due date for that particular invoice would be. The moment it goes one day overdue, you'll get, you'll get a notification there. Uh, there's options out there, but I would make sure, because unless you have somebody who is checking your accounts receivable every single day, make sure the software you choose notifies you when something becomes overdue. Uh, and the last thing that I want to show you while we're here is called the firm dashboard. And for us, uh, it basically can be used as a page to prioritize any back office duties for the day or give you a chance to just take a step back and see the firm's performance at a glance. So what we could use this page for, again, accounts receivable. You could always go to that firm dashboard. This little red part here, the 1%, represents what is currently overdue at the time. Um, now, you're not going to collect from everybody, and not everybody is going to pay their bill on time. To have all of your AR current all the time, is a dream, but we will hopefully limit this to as small of a piece of the pie as we can, and we'll show you what that looks like. Uh, this will give you an idea of how much stuff is is needing to be billed out, and depending on what type of work you do, contingency stuff, you do a lot of that, those could be all over the place. But the idea here is you can always sit back and get a good idea of if anything seems off. That's what this page is, 
generally used for. So you definitely want to be able to have a page where if you take a step back, you can see how you're doing. In summary, um, basically I just want to stress the importance of remaining knowledgeable about your firm, uh, your clients, and your books. Legal technology has come a very, very long way. Um, we've been there for a lot of it. We've got a lot of mementos around the office, and I've seen uh, all sorts of different kinds of software in my years here. So small firms have thrived since the days of MS-DOS, and they thrive now. There are some huge differences in the demands that lawyers have to meet nowadays. Uh, the readily available information is one of them, shareability, and the need for the time to actually apply your trade. So I want to thank everybody who was here and listened to me go on. I hope you took something from it. At Current, uh, if you are interested, we offer a 30-day free trial of Current at current.com forward slash LTRC, or just go to current.com. Uh, and at this point, I would be happy to open it up for any questions that you guys have, and I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, the first question we have is, I do my books in QuickBooks. Are there cloud programs that integrate with QuickBooks, or do I need to enter receipts into both systems? So uh, there are cloud options out there that integrate with QuickBooks. I would say uh, a lot of attorneys use QuickBooks, we found. So that was one of the first integrations that we looked into. Um, there are ones out there that integrate with QuickBooks. What you will find is that many of them integrate only payments um, and are not sending over payables, and other ones send over payables. Depending on what level of integration you need, they do offer QuickBooks integration. When you're looking at your cloud products, um, find where the settings are. And for us, obviously, it's just the gear icon up here. When you go to the settings page, the QuickBooks integration stuff will almost always be in there somewhere, not necessarily up in the upper right, like we have ours here, but um, you're almost guaranteed to find out whether your system integrates with QuickBooks by going to the settings page. Good question. All right, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Looks like we're getting, I'm sorry, a slew of questions coming in here. Let's try to get to all of these. Sure. Um, the first of which is, uh, does Current allow you to import data from a prior timekeeping system? Yes, it does. Um, we will actually do that ourselves for free even if it's just during your trial. So no matter what you were using before, if you can find a way to get that data into a spreadsheet or a CSV file, something like that, um, or if you have a very small amount of data, you know, if you're only working with 15 to 20 clients uh, that you want to bring over to current, we'll just do it manually. But we will do it for free, absolutely, from any timekeeping system that you can pull information out of, absolutely. All right. Thank you, Elliot. Uh, looks like the yep. next one we have is, do the invoices allow you to directly collect the funds by credit card or e-check? Ah, yes. Good question. I actually I didn't think to show that. But yes, um, uh, a lot of times software, um, cloud software will integrate with a, you know, a credit card processor. Uh, us in particular, we do it with LawPay. So uh, LawPay is a specifically a credit card processor that's very specific to law firms and legal services. Uh, so yes, if you integrate with LawPay, then when you send an invoice in current, we will include a make payment link right there. So a person can pay as soon as they get the email if they want to, absolutely. Thank you. All right, uh, looks like the next question is, does the program allow time to be imported on a monthly basis from another program? We use LawBase. Gotcha. Um, currently, there's not a way to import on a regular basis transactions into Current. Um, Current was designed to have time entered in its own system. Um, so no, unfortunately not. And there's not, as far as I know, there's not plans at this time to create a system for importing external transactions as the main source of time entries. All right. Thank you. Um, the next question is, sorry, we're getting a bunch coming in at once. Great questions, everyone. Um, hey. This question is kind of a, I think, a two-part question. It says, how do you access records in a PI case? And how much, is, oh, and then that's just a general question about uh, how much does your system cost to implement and operate day-to-day, month-to-month? So those are from the same person, but uh, I guess okay. they're unrelated questions. Um, access data from a PI case, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what's meant by that. Current is a specifically a billing system, 
and does not, we did not incorporate uh, practice management software features in it. So there's not document management attached to current um, or, uh, or email storage, journal entries, those type of things. Uh, current was designed for small and, uh, small and solo firms in order to make billing easier. If there was any information that you needed to gather on a matter, um, specifically I would take you back to that matter dashboard that we were talking about earlier. Uh, all the information on things that have been added for them, as well as their contact info, notes, and balances due would all be available here. Um, this is largely where all of the information on a matter is kept. And pricing. Uh, current is $29 a month per user on a monthly basis. If you pay annually, it comes out to $26 uh, per month per user. And that is, there are no plans for pricing changes in the future, uh, even as we continue to uh, make current more efficient. All Good right, question. well, thank okay. you very much. Uh, it looks like the next question we have is, uh, can the invoices be customized with the firm logo, with your firm logo, I guess? Absolutely. So I will give you an idea of what that looks like, and I'll just open up an invoice that I have already created, um, Armstrong Manufacturing here. So uh, uh, if you go to default and settings, you can decide not only whether you just use the firm name and address, and what that is basically is you just put in your information here and we supplant it onto the invoice. You can use your firm logo, name and address, and that is where if you were to add a, uh, add a logo up here like I have, then we will put that in the upper left of your invoices, or you can use firm letterhead image. And with the firm letterhead image, we will stretch that across the top of your invoices, much like you saw in that picture, uh, seven and a half inches wide, I believe is how far we'll stretch it out just to cover the entire thing. You have lots of options. And then when it comes to customizing the way that they look, we have a lot of different families of invoice styles. And then of course you can choose whether you do like an invoice or a simple invoice statement, how your fees show up and whether your initials show up. So yeah, there are a lot of options there, and uh, if you log in uh, and you were to set up a type of invoice that you like, um, but you wanted something tweaked on it, we'll actually customize those for you. We will create cust uh, custom invoices. Assuming that it's not a, a complete recreation of our invoices, we will customize our own invoices for you and give you a custom template to use. So that's something to think about as well. Okay, uh, this next question, I know, Elliot, you addressed uh, the cost of um, a single person for using mm -hmm. Current, uh, but this question asks, uh, how much does this solution cost? Is this system appropriate for a firm in the range of 30 attorneys? That price does not change as you increase users. It is the same per month per user. So I would say um, that price-wise, when you start getting into that many attorneys, this would be quite an expensive option definitely designed with uh, small firms in mind. Um, this, okay, yeah, this next question is, can you establish flat fees for a variety of legal tasks? Um, and then it says, we're an IP firm and build different flat fees for various activities like trademark registrations, renewals, et cetera. Of course, of course. So in, uh, in current, I will close this real quick and we will go to, uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So if I'm going to add a fee, um, Activities are something that a lot of firms um, deal with in their, in their practice. What we have done with our activity list is, is, is a completely identical to the Leeds 1998B e-billing format, you know, the, the, the activities that come along with that, but these are all completely editable. So uh, for an IP firm, uh, you know, I won't find one specific to you guys, but uh, if I wanted to ma take research here, and make it a flat amount, I could absolutely do that. And then anytime you were to use the activity research, you could charge the exact same amount for it. And you can create new ones of these. Uh, yes, uh, the activity list is completely customizable by you, and each one has options that can either have their own specific rate or the specific amount. Uh, what we see is people either do that a lot, like, uh, like you guys said, uh, IP firm, you charge a lot of flat amounts for things, we see people creating custom lists of activities for themselves. Um, 
and a lot of people use e-billing leads, 1990B, things like that, and they need to use those. Otherwise, if you don't do a lot of flat fee billing or you don't have specific rates for things, a lot of people leave the activity field alone, which is also an option. But yes, you can create the type of custom list that you're thinking of, absolutely. Your question. All right, uh, the next one we've got is, how does your billing system work with time slips software? We will convert and migrate data from time slips, but uh, like somebody had asked before, we do not have a system in place to um, regularly convert data from time slips to current. So if you are a current time slips user, we will absolutely bring over the data if you want to try it out in current, uh, but we do not regularly integrate uh, in a way that brings over transactions from time slips. Good question. Thank you. All right. This next question we have is, I don't know if it is possible to completely remove myself from the accounting process. Can you expand on how I'm supposed to separate the books from my staff? Absolutely. Um, a lot of this comes in the form of integration. So, uh, like I said here, we integrate with QuickBooks, and a lot of a lot of billing software does that. Um, and one way that we sort of take ourselves out of it is simply when you add a when you add a new matter in current. Um, basically, we will send that over to QuickBooks in the form of a customer and a job. So that takes you out of the um, out of the process of actually entering customers and jobs into QuickBooks. And then once you have those matters and contacts over there. If you add a payment for them here, we will attach that to a product and service in QuickBooks and automatically add a payment for that product and service in the same amount. So that is two ways that you take yourself out of it. If there is further accounting that needs to be done, um, and I understand the I understand your question 100%. I know it's difficult um, unless you have somebody full time that does that. The idea is to remove yourself as much as possible. So, and what, and by that I mean you enter time in a billing system, which is less um, less involved than actually going in and doing uh, book work in QuickBooks. Uh, Current will add those entries for you so that you don't have to worry about it, and they'll add them to the accounts that you mapped yourself. Um, so the double entry removes the a double entry can open its way up to making mistakes. Uh, the idea is to get it down to as little work as possible and making the books themselves automated. So I know that you cannot completely remove yourself. That is difficult, um, but to get as close as possible so that uh, human errors can't sort of make their way into your books. All right. Um, and we're still um, kind of getting a lot of uh, pricing questions and that type of thing. Uh, Elliot, I sure. know what we've done in the past with Industry Insight, um, we've just kind of had emails uh, we've kind of allowed like for you to share your email for any follow-up questions and get into like the nitty-gritty of how specifically you might apply current to your current situation. Um, no pun intended. Sure. Um, so I'm not sure if you want to kind of address those kind of questions that way. Um, otherwise, I think we have some other good questions coming in that are uh, not pricing related, but I just wanted to make that announcement sure. something that um, maybe we could consider also put in our follow-up email as like your contact information. I'll tell you what, if you've got pricing questions, there are two ways Two ways you can get a hold of us. Um, you can go to current.com slash pricing. Uh, don't worry, you will, not be, you will not be subjected to, you know, promo emails just for visiting the site. If you want to see the pricing, you go to current.com slash pricing. Or feel free to email uh, sales at current.com or support at current.com, and we would be happy to answer any specific, uh, specific questions related to your office. Uh, absolutely. Any any details you need to talk about, give us a call to uh, 419-219, I'm sorry, 402-219-2211. Again, that's 402-219-2211. Uh, that gets anybody here. So anything pricing related, uh, please feel free to reach us at any of those contact items or go to current.com slash pricing. Uh, I will answer, of course, any more of those functionality or general questions. Awesome. All right. It uh, looks like this next one is, I know that you said the billing is linked to law pay for credit card usage. My question is, how much does law pay charge per transaction? I'm new to all of this, and I do not know if you can answer that question. You, you are correct. Um, we integrate with law pay, so any users of law pay uh, are free to use that system through current. We, current will allow 
law pay to process those transactions. They themselves control their own pricing, though, um, and they don't necessarily keep us abreast of all of the pricing changes that come along with that. So um, you would have to visit their website in order to see how much that costs. I think they're fairly reasonable is my answer, I guess. All right. Uh, well, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to submit those into the question box. Otherwise, I think our last question uh, is queued up here, and it is, sure. it's important that our system keeps track of who created what. Do these systems have audit trails? They absolutely do. Um, any t if you have multiple users in current, um, what we will do, if you only have one user, we will not show who created the items because they will be you, probably, I assume. Uh, if you have more than one user, then any time you open up a uh, – Hey, uh, anytime you open up a record, whether it's a matter or a contact or a fee or a cost or an invoice, anything at all, in the lower right, we will say who it was added by. So this says added by you, but if it was added by another user, it would say added by Chris or added by Austin or added by uh, Janet, something like that. So yes, uh, audit systems are definitely in place to make sure that nothing makes its way into the system without knowing whose user actually put it there. Good question. All right. Well, I believe that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Current, and all of you for attending our webinar today as part of the LTRC Industry Insight Series. I'd also like to thank Elliot for presenting. And Elliot, if you have anything else to add before we get out of here, feel free to do so now. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and shut things down. No, Austin, I very much appreciate your help. Everybody that listened in, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, and good luck if you guys are on the hunt for, uh, you know, for an easier way of doing things. I hope you find what you're looking for. Uh, feel free to contact us if, uh, if you know, it looks like a system that works for you. And thanks again. All right. Have a great day, everyone.